We have a special guest here today. We're very excited to have on the show the director of Acid Man, which is a science fiction drama starring Thomas Hayden Church. He is a UFO enthusiast. And things go, things get a little bit mysterious in a cabin in the woods. Alex is here joining us on the Film Threat Livecast. Nice. Alex, how you doing today? Good um, to see you, sir. Well, thanks. Good to see you. Awesome. Tell nice. us what, first, first of all, you could not have released this movie at a better time. Uh, well, it's the balloons that I've been releasing out into the world these last couple of months that I released at the right time. <laughs> I feel like it's the mainstream news is doing yeah. the promotion for you, which well, is awesome. Yeah. But tell us what led to this project. I think interest in, I mean, I look, I've always loved UFO stuff from when I was a kid. I read Chariots of the Gods and okay. love just theories about UFOs. Is it aliens? What are they? Um, what led to doing this movie? And do you have a passion for UFOs yourself and uh, Philadelphia Eagles? Dude, love that. Love that. Eagles fans. There oh. you go. Okay, that could have gone one of two ways. As soon as no, 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 that, no, no. Okay. I, I was rooting for them uh, in the in the Super Bowl. But uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. tell us about what led to uh, making Acid Man. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, Close Encounters, E.T. Those are movies I grew up on. Um, I would love to make my E.T. I think I just made my Close Encounters. Like this is, and I, I think some reviewers and, and a lot of fans have kind of caught on to the fact that this was uh, – uh, the the two hander indie cousin to to, to close encounters, but um, I can't say that I'm like a total UFO believer. I'm certainly not um, anti. It's, it's not. I'm definitely open to them existing. I want them to exist, right? As, even if I'm a, a skeptical person at times, uh, I'd say first of all, this movie is an experience. You know, has been a practice for me to to try to be less skeptical and more open minded to what else could be out there. Um, in relationships and and in the universe, and um, man, life life just sounds a lot more exciting if there are UFOs. I don't know. How, how do you guys feel about that? I, I love it. I think that because everyone has a phone on a, a you know a camera phone with them at all times, yeah. uh, of you know, like that's led to more and more UFOs. I think that some of it is some things that are naturally occurring. I, I love the movie Nope last summer because it was yeah. a different take. I like that the, it was sort of a bait and switch with the trailer. It's aliens. It actually wasn't. It was a sky jaws basically. Yeah. 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 And I, I thought that was great. So I love the theories, but I, there's, I, I'm, I got to think that our U S government knows a lot more than they're saying. I think so. I think so. There's too many credible people who have, uh, you know, had, had great stories, but like, again, like given the option, uh, life seems a lot more boring if there aren't UFOs. So let's just let's just say, like, I think there are, and, and we haven't maybe you know found the uh, you know all the proof we need. But I, I would give credit to those UFOs that probably they they also aren't just going to hand over that 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 proof. So um, yeah, I'm in for the fun ride in life. Let's <laughs> let's be open minded on on all this stuff. And Thomas Hayden Church, I've always loved him as an actor, mainly because. He can play comedy, just yeah. straight up, you know, broad comedy. He can also be very serious. He's stoic. The, the, yes. best thing about, the best thing about Thomas, you know, and working with him, sometimes I'd give him an, like both in the film and when the cameras aren't rolling, he'll just kind of hit this like silent, this pause. And you don't know if he's about to crack a joke or like punch you in the teeth. You don't know. <laughs> You just and you just like see like anything is possible in the next moment with Thompson. I think that's what makes him so. One of the things that makes him so watchable is you're like, what is this guy going to do next? And like, I hope he makes me laugh. But like, if he punches me in the teeth, that's kind of cool too. Like, you know. Yeah, he's just he's just so watchable as an actor, and he's yeah. just very different. Even in uh, the Spider-Man movies, you know, like I. I think I thought his character had some pathos. Sure. It was it was very good. So it was it was great to see him turn up in that in that last movie. Uh, let me let me ask you about his counterpart with Diana Agron. I, I know her obviously from from Glee, but sure. I don't think what most people know is she's been pe appearing in a lot of indie films. Uh, yeah. You know what was what was it like getting her, and what was it about her that that would made her perfect for this role? Well, she'd reached out to me. Um, 
and uh, th you know, through through her reps, th th she wanted to work with me on something, and I was kind of trying to find the right project. But she made it very clear that she was taking her own career in, you know, in, in her own control. She's like, I've done enough glee and it's time to, you know, flex some other muscles. And um, I'm, I'm known for these indie two handers with a lot of improv, uh, dramatic improv. And it, I think it allows actors to kind of flex. Also, the other films that I'd done at that point, you know, Sarah Paulson um, in Blue Jay, she'd never gotten really to like, play the girl next door, which is so absurd to say, but she was doing um, American Horror Story at the time. She's like a two-headed monster. And then Ray Romano wasn't really doing a bunch of uh, drama yet uh, when we when we cast him in Paddleton. So I think she, I think Diana knew me as the kind of filmmaker that likes to take chances with, with actors when it's obvious that they've got that talent and, and to just give them like as much open space as possible to flex. And, and the trade-off is I get to work with these amazing actors because they're they're showing up for something new so diana diana definitely uh trusted me on this one and i i felt really lucky to have her on um, we've got we've got a lot of uh comments and questions from uh people in the chat do you mind we've got like 500 people watching live amazing. so let's Hi, uh, nice to meet you <laughs> so uh let's let's pose let's get some of these comments going it says solomon thornton says sir alex in the house Oh, and uh, now I got a big head. Way to go. go. <laughs> and then uh, Ms. Pico Coffee. Thank you, Ms. Pico Coffee, our moderator in the chat says the review for Acid Man is here. Uh, got a good review on the Film Threat website. Yeah. Solomon Thornton says X Files made me believe. Imperfect says something is out there. And then it. Solomon Thornton goes on to ask, How did you budget your film? That's a great question. So, um, we, we shot it during the pandemic and I thought I was going to make this very modestly um, for, you know, a million bucks and, and thinking like, this is unheard of. We're going to put, you know, with like these actors. Uh, and then we ended up having to even scale back more. Um, I, I budgeted it a few times and it, it, it just kind of turned into, you know, this is what it is. I always think you need an anchor as far as like, what is, what is the main thing that's, that you can build a movie off of logistically. And it wasn't until we found these like CBD, these hemp farms in Oregon uh, that happened to like, you know, they had like one was the perfect exterior for the house. The other was the interior. And like these guys were cousins and um, and their dogs were in our movie. I was just like, this is this place has everything. There was a diner down the street. And and we realized like, oh, we can do this on a budget over here. So um, we just kind of found that the location as the anchor and built everything around it. And then we had to convince, you know, Mr. Acid Man, Thomas Hayden Church, to to leave the house and come out to Oregon, which was, you know, he doesn't leave often. So that was fun. Greasy Guido has a comment here. Don't worry, guys. I put on my sunglasses and can confirm Alex is not one of them. Yeah, Guido can chew bubble gum and kick ass. Right? Uh, there you go. <laughs> and then he goes on to ask a question. I always hear Thomas Ch Hayden Church spoken with all three of his name, all three names. Does he go by Tom or Tommy in real life? Uh, both. Yeah, 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 both. There you go. And uh, let's see. Another question here from Kara asks, uh, what is your favorite U.S. UFO conspiracy theory? I think that's for you guys. <laughs> no that's that's the question for what is your favorite one we want to hear yours my favorite conspiracy theory i don't know that i'm on ufos i mean i used to read them all as a kid you know all, all the sightings and everything they, they were all fantastic i mean there was one that was this like really creepy i don't remember what it's called i, I read it as a kid but like this person kept drawing these aliens and like they, the the specific the, the significant thing about them is like they didn't have lips and there was something like terrifying to me about these aliens that didn't have lips and I had like nightmares for, for years, but it was also like really cool. So I don't know, whatever that was, yeah. The Nerd Far Away asks, hello, Alex, do you think UFOs fit into the idea of intelligent design? I don't know what intelligent design is. You're gonna have to help me out on that. Oh, that's like, uh, you know, God, basically. Uh, oh. Yeah. Like a scientific approach to God or that, that yeah. or there is like someone right. it's, yeah, that's, there have been theories related to that. That's one to look up for sure. Go down a rabbit hole. So you knew yeah. when you made a movie like this, you're going to get these questions. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say. I, mean, I, I love it. My my interaction with, um, I mean, first of all, the footage we have in the film, we we 
we found people on YouTube who posted their real, you know, UAP footage. And we, you know, we licensed that because we thought like, why would we create anything in VFX and people, you know, captured these lights and, you know, we thought that would give it more authenticity, but, um, you know, I, I, whatever it is that's that's next level, I, I don't think we can understand it completely, you know, regardless. So whether it's, you know, UFOs or, or God or whatever it is, I'm I'm all in for it, but I I don't assume that I can understand. Right. More yeah. comments and questions here. Uh, what a it's boring okay. answer, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's okay to laugh as what was your inspiration for the film? Yeah, the inspiration, I mean, the very the very first draft was a, a father-son story and there were no UFOs. So it, it was crafted more from a relationship standpoint. And it wasn't until that uh, the the introduction of the um, the UFO element that it really started to take off. Um, and that was one where I remember like I had learned. Um, I mean, everybody knows that like E.T. was was um, originally a, a family story about a father abandoning the family. There was no alien. Right. Like it, right, it's just right. like it was the same thing, right? The pathos were there, but like, it didn't feel like it was about something, about something fun and, and hopeful. Um, so yeah, for me, there's, there's a lot of that. I got a little skin in the game um, on the, on the personal side with that one, but it's also, I was really, it was in the middle of the pandemic where we were finally going to make it. And obviously people disagree about a lot of things these days more than they used to. We don't have to get into too many specifics, but um but it's amazing how hard it is sometimes to connect with people that you like or love when you just disagree about something ideologically. And so I felt like there was this thought exercise that needed to happen where it was like, where do you find love and connection when like maybe ideologies um, are standing in the way? That's a great theme to explore. I think it's a great theme to explore right now, um, yeah. especially as our country seems to become more unraveled and divided. Maynard Lloyd says they're not conspiracy theories, they're facts. Thank you. That's why I was getting thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony Bowers has a question. Where were the couple locations in Oregon? Where'd you shoot? Um, well, where they shoot off the fireworks, that was the um Azalea was the main town. Um, and I think it was the Azalea Reservoir. Um that that we did the it, it's the reservoir right by Azalea, whatever it's called. I think it was the Azalea Reservoir. Where we it, I mean it looks awesome. It looks like like Star Trek would have shot there, right? Or maybe they have shot there. Like there were trees growing out of the water. It just looked like another planet. I was like, it wasn't scripted for for a reservoir. But when I saw that place, it was like, this feels like where you come to connect, communicate with, with you know, uh, UFOs. Cool. And one final question here from Lubitsch Touch Me asks, what's your dream project if budget isn't a factor and who would you want to star in it? Um... Great question. It probably would be a version of uh, of ET, uh, some sort of you know more like a YA adventure, but still make you laugh, make you cry, kind of kind of thing. And um, man, I don't know. There's way too many actors that want. I, I can't. I can't sing sing <laughs> on the other. No, no, no. There's there's so many talented people for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Can I fan out for a second? Um, you 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 directed Asperger's R.S. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I have to say, um, our, I, I belong to an improv troupe in San Diego. And for, I think, over five years, we've been running an autism improv program. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, and just, just, especially in the eyes of the parents, of just how much it has opened up their kids uh, to, to them and to life. Uh, you know, it's 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 something I never thought would ever happen or th that could happen, but to bring improv and, and autism together uh, has just, you know, I've seen, I've seen what it can do, the miracles it can do. Yeah. It's transformative. I mean, improv is great for, for uh, anybody. I mean, obviously I do improv even in my moves. It forces people to listen. Like anybody that's taken even improv one oh one, they quickly learn what you can't do is just like ignore the other person while they're talking and like sit there and think like, what's the funniest thing I can say? Because as soon as you, it's your turn to talk, you don't even know what you're responding to anymore. So your thing is non sequitur. So the only way you can improv well is by being super present and listening to people. And like, that's a great way to connect. Uh, we all, we all could learn uh, a yeah. little better how, to, how to listen. So um, we should all take improv. Forget, forget just the autistics. We should all be taking improv classes. <laughs> well, I want to, uh, uh, Alex, I want to thank you for being on our show today. Really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Congratulations on the movie. Acid Man is currently out on demand. Is that right? 
Yeah, VOD, uh, iTunes, and and Amazon. Yeah, a couple of theaters too. But uh, awesome. Thank you guys. Great. Uh, yeah, you're the best. Thank you. Congrats. Come back with uh, for your next movie. All righty. Awesome. All right. Go Philly. Take care. Later. <laughs>